So this video is about how to squat in the woods. I'm sure some of you are familiar with Kathleen Meyer's bestseller that sits on many of a throne. It has alerted many to the perils of laying a load on the landscape. Well, nature can call at the most inconvenient times. And if you're not prepared, it can really put you down in the dumps. But no fear, because I've got a little toilet humor and some really bad puns. So if you're out on the prowl and your bowel starts to howl, there's hope. So what's all the stink about? Other animals jettison their junk with merely the lift of a tail. And isn't it actually good for the plants? Well, fecal deposits do add organic matter, nitrogen, and other nutrients to the soil, but also contain pathogens like E. coli and Giardia. By the way, did you order mushrooms with that big whopper? Oh, I don't believe it. That right there is a rock, and underneath that rock is some toilet paper. And this over here is a freshwater stream. Some idiot thought, wow, clean water. What a great place to relieve myself. And they did this. Leaving your sphincter surprise near any body of water means its bacteria and viruses get carried to the nearby streams with the runoff, which in turn go to the rivers and lakes where many get their drinking water. Oh my God. And this is the same stream that I cooled my beer in a day ago. I may never drink another beer again. Everybody loves a fresh water stream. And to keep them feces free, it just takes a little common sense. Yet even those groomed trails with designated pit stops may be a challenge when you suddenly get that urge to take the load off Fanny. There's nothing more frustrating than to get to the end of the trail and need to make a deposit and only find out the bank's closed. It's off season. Or what if that outback outhouse is not up to the standards of sanitation and comfort? Here's an actual camp restroom that would have made Jeff Goldblum proud. Did I mention the fragrance issues with those overly frequented privies? On a hike, you need to worry about loose rocks, not loose bowels. When you're out in the wilderness, the last thing you want to be worried about is having to take a shih tzu for a walk. But I digressed. This video is supposed to be about squatting. It's a sad fact, but not everybody is a squatter. Some people can't squat like this and balance on their feet. And if you're okay with your knees, however, maybe all you need is a little bit of support, like a stick or a log or something like that. Or if you're by a log, you might be able to just lean back like that and get a little support. One thing you don't want to do is get on a log like this because the chances are you're going to get startled or something and you're going to fall backwards and go in your own mess and you don't want to do that. But if you do find a fallen tree and you can find two branches that have a bit of a space between them, this could be the perfect alternative. That's comfy. I want to take it home. In Mundare, Alberta, there's a monument to the local sausage plant, but to me it looks like the result of eating too much sausage. One of my favorite techniques is good old rock and roll. Where you find a rock, preferably in a sheltered location and certainly away from any bodies of water, and you roll it. Do your stuff. Roll it back. Out of sight. Animals will probably leave it alone and uh, it'll still decompose. I love rock and roll. But rock and roll can be too popular with many others dancing to the same beat. Oh, it's been used. 
Even worse, others may occupy your chosen drop spot. Scorpions, snakes, and spiders may not appreciate the wink of a big red eye. Well, if there's no rocks to rock and roll, then you're gonna have to dig a hole, you dig? And if you're like crap a pile Dundee, you'll just reach back. Showtime. So if there's no other alternative but to dig, and you have a shovel, then the first part's easy. Try to find a place where there's good organic soil. Dark, uh, a lot of uh, organic material, so it'll break down easily. Um, I'm under a tree, but you should be just on the edge of the tree. That way some moisture will come in and help with breaking it down. But as far as digging, it's usually good about, with this type of soil here, and this is pretty loose, uh, about eight or nine inches, and you've got a good hole. Do your business. Plop, plop. Put it all back. Try to make it look like nothing's ever happened. Now, if you didn't bring a trusty shovel, look around for a branch and dig a trough. Troughs are a lot easier, although it takes a little longer to get to a good depth. Oh, and you also have to deal with roots as well. Here's a prairie dog hole. Lots of prairie dogs in southern Alberta. Kind of reminds me of uh, one of the videos I did, uh, Valley of the Gods in Utah. Some people uh, sort of thought it was a little short, and it was. It's because I took out part of the video. I was thinking it was the politically correct thing to do. But uh, I'm thinking now, with this video, to hell with it. Uh, I'm going to include that little section I took out. You might enjoy it, or you might not, but it was all for fun. A lot of the time you're out camping and hiking and uh, nature calls. The first one's pretty easy, the second one's more of a challenge. Now fortunately in this area uh, where there's a lot of flatlands and prairies, there's a lot of rabbits and gophers and prairie dogs and groundhogs and all those rodents. And these they leave these convenient holes. To me it's like a twisted way of playing golf. You get a hole in one and you leave no trace. But I guess in that one unfortunate incident when uh, it is occupied, well, I guess they'll have a surprise when they get up in the morning. It's kind of like Bugs Buddy meets uh, Mr. Hanky. Hi to hi, neighbor. <laughs> uh, I think I've been traveling too long. One of the great things about a hot, arid desert is those chocolate bunnies from hell, they don't stand a chance. They're gonna be dried and fried in no time. However, you can't leave them out on display. If you can't take them with you, you gotta bury them. Bury them in the sand, only a few inches, or under a rock, and let nature take its course. Finding a substitute for toilet paper in the middle of the desert can be a real pain in the butt. Literally. Especially if you didn't bring your favorite quilted roll of the soft stuff. But before you even think of those two scary words, one is hand and the other is sand, think of a third choice. What's in your wallet? Using a credit card as a scraping device is a great way to wipe out debt, but if you prefer paper, two Washingtons beat a Jackson any day. But if you are by a riverbed, there is one option if you forgot the TP, and that is the scraping rock. Nice, smooth, contoured, because if number two isn't really pretty, you might need a scraper.
What if you're out in the forest like this and you gotta drop a log? Well, as far as the squatting, you can find a couple of fallen trees and straddle them, use them for support. So that part's good. But what about the wiping stuff? Well, you probably don't want to use these pine cones, but pine needles, especially like this ponderosa pine, are actually very soft if you go the right way. Go the wrong way, it's kind of like a porcupine, if you know what I mean. Well, mullen is a trekker's friend. It's soft and cuddly, just like teddy bear ears. Easy to take off. You can even find some dead ones in behind, not feel too guilty about the plant. But that's mullen, not mullet. But if you want to cut off somebody's mullet and use that, it's probably going to work and you'd be doing them a favor because it's not the 70s anymore. Well, if it's the summer, it might not be that much of a bummer. But like Frankie Valley, there's four seasons. There's no worse time to do a doo-doo than on a winter hike. Why? Because it's cold, snowy, and you probably have a lot of layers on. There is one good thing. There's lots of wiping material. If you don't mind that little jolt from the first time you use it. So when it's winter time and yesterday's meal decides to make a quick exit, what do you do? You can't bury it in the snow because it'll just stay perfectly preserved till the spring and it goes out with the runoff. And if you do find some open soil, chances are it's frozen. The only thing you can do is pack it out. Well, the best way to avoid the curse of the coiled bronze cobra is to simply be a little prepared. Always bring some RV toilet paper, you know, the kind that breaks up really quickly. The plastic bag. And last but not least, a hand sanitizer. You don't want pink eye on your hike. But someone came up with an idea that is bound to make a pile of money. A little pocket pouch by potty pack that'll make poo poo prep more portable. So the best option for squatting in the woods is pretty obvious. Don't squat in the woods. One sure way for me to avoid a dastardly deed on the trail is to be regular. And for me, starting off my morning with a little oatmeal and a strong cup of coffee, you can set the clock on me. So the key to avoid the caca cha cha is by going in advance of your forest frolic. Most trailheads and campsites have restrooms, as do gas stations and food stores. And what better excuse for roadside attractions than to leave something behind, from your behind? Well, I know what you're thinking. That video was really a pile of crap. And it really, really stunk. But that's okay. Because I had a poopery of little files I wanted to get rid of, and I finally relieved myself. Hopefully be able to wipe some of your fears aside and pick out some good bits that actually might be useful. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, make sure you check out my other videos as well. Oh, it's hot out. Ha, ha, ha.